Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Anush Pachel. I secured an auditor rank of 1378 PG24 and in this video I'll be telling you how exactly I made my study plan during my internship and how I ideally stick to it and made my scores go up subsequently in all the GTs which I gave. So let's start. The first point that you have to remember my friends is to start giving GTs. This is a very important thing. Most people are afraid of GTs because they are like, I'm going to get a low percentile. I'm not going to get good scores. Why should I actually give a GT in the first place? In the first half of the preparation, you are giving GT just to analyze where you stand. What the subjects which are weak what are the subjects which are strong and what are the places where you need to improve maybe it's question solving maybe it's, uh, not making silly mistakes maybe it's avoiding the short things which you forget to read in the question itself maybe you don't know the subject let's say you are very weak at pharmacology and you don't know the pharmacology at all in the initial half of the preparation gts are key 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 they are giving you a list of subjects which you should work on plus they are also giving you the baseline preparation so let's say that you're starting your need page preparation today what do you do you give a baseline gt to assess your scores to assess where you're standing plus to also assess what are your weak subjects are you able to manage the time are you able to read the questions and most importantly is your motivation the same on question number one as it is on question number 200 so this is why first step is first that is to give a baseline gt to assess your performance and assess where you stand after given your baseline gt you now have a list of subjects if you're using marrow you will get this on the gt analysis page that what are your top subjects and what are your weakest subjects and you have to always start working on the weakest subjects first because those subjects when turned good they will fetch you a lot of marks in the upcoming gts so once you've got that list write down the bottom six to seven subjects that you've got and based on any of the preference that you would like read any of these six seven subjects and start studying from these subjects to get the maximum returns all right so that was the very first point is to start giving gts and analyzing what subjects you need to work on point number two is to set specific goals whenever you're solving for need pg make sure that your need pg goal is at least getting 160 questions correct if you're getting 160 plus in neat pg you are going to be in a very good spot you're going to have at least a rank of under 10,000. according to me under 10,000 rank is excellent it's great because it's a very competitive examination in the first place that's the deal that whatever goal that you're setting for yourself it should minimum be 160 questions correct and my friends i'll tell you this one thing even if you are at 100 questions correct right now and if you're dreaming of getting 160 questions correct in like let's say five to six months it is absolutely absolutely possible so that's one thing which you have to remember that it is possible to do it and even if you're thinking that it is impossible you should stop thinking that and set a specific measurable objectively maybe unachievable right now goal for yourself so that you can follow that goal in every single gt that you give make sure that you have a post-it note with 160 plus written and you have stuck it on your wall or on your study table wherever that you frequently look because you would want every day every moment of your studies to be reminded what you're working towards and the objectively achievable goal over here is that number 160 plus corrects in your gts as you can see right over there i think somewhere is you can find my 170 plus which i had written after i had crossed the 160 mark in my gt because i felt my performance was going down so whatever it is maybe you're scoring 85 questions correct your goal should be 160 plus it will give you a very safe rank uh, one of my friends has a final correct score of 155 and she has gotten a rank of like 8000 or something so that's the thing that 160 would be very very good it would be great i myself had a total correct answers of 165 165 correct 34 incorrect one skipped in the main need pg examination and i scored an all india rank of 1307 so it really matters quite a lot what is the total number of questions correct that you actually do now that you've got a very specific goal i would want you to go to your whiteboard and write down weekly timetable of what you're going to be achieving in that week it might be doing medicine OBGY or surgery it might be doing short subjects whatever it is make a week wise timetable of the 25 days that you have got in a month week one two three four and these are the things that you'll achieve in each week it's very important that you do that because after waking up you do not want to be wasting a single second deciding what you want to do today it should already be written and if you're going over the deadline let's say i had written surgery for four days if fourth day is there i'm not completing surgery i should just give up at the end of the fourth day because my grand timetable is more important than completing the entire subject in 100 detail i would just read up the important things and next day i would start the next subject because i could take up infinite time to complete a subject and that would not give me that much return so a specific time duration for each subject you have to keep that in mind setting up your goals in such a way is a very good motivator for you to actually do your studies well because you see what you have to do you actually do it and then when you do it you feel a sense of completion and that is a very rewarding thing to feel 
Next, when you will see your goals continuously, it will be sort of like a manifestation thing which will happen provided your efforts are aligned with the universe's effort to give you that 160 number. Next point is to divide the subjects based on their weightage. So in my Neat PG Success Blueprint, I've also talked about this. I've given you exact table. In that table, I've divided the subjects for you for the last five years of Neat PG and INICT which subject has how many questions appearing from it. And you can actually check out the Neat PG Success Blueprint. I've got a link in the description. Anyways, just go and take a look at the previous year questions and you will realize the final year and the second year subjects have a lot of questions that are asked from them followed by the first year and the third year ones and the last is the short subjects so if possible start from final year subjects then go to second year then go to first year then go to third year subjects uh, and lastly the short subjects once you've got the subject categories divided you have to take a two sort approach one is the first of all so all the subjects which are having most amount of questions asked from them so the final year subjects medicine surgery OBGY, pediatrics orthopedics also has a lot of questions asked from it so these are the five subjects that you can start your preparation with secondly you can start your preparation with the worst subjects that you've got so for me it was the short subjects plus forensic medicine so in my gts every time these were the short subjects which are very weak in the end so you can start your preparation with the weak subjects it's okay if you're spending more time on difficult subjects and subjects which have high weightage for example obg surgery psm anatomy microbiology pathology all of these have very high weightage it's okay if you're spending one or two days extra at it but the low yield subjects you know the short subjects like psychiatry anesthesia these are low yield subjects so don't spend a lot of time on it it will just waste your time once you have written down okay these are the subjects list and I'm going to give this many days for each subject then you can ideally go to your whiteboard and write down the entire timetable for the next four weeks and you can plan your entire month according to your studies the resources my friends the resource like I always mentioned marrow rapid revision there is nothing in the market that can currently beat it it's really good you can use it it has got great concepts as well plus it is short to read and you can concise your notes from marrow's rapid revision video and in any case you should be having the minimum of the GT plan that is plan A for marrow because no GT on the market is as close to need PG as marrow and I say this with my experience you can also check out my older videos and see me using the same things I'm suggesting only what I've used and nothing else apart from it. incorporating breaks and buffer days in between let's say that you've got a timetable of 25 days in your hand in between make sure that you have at least five buffer days so that something bad might happen in your life you know something unexpected might happen you might not feel like studying you might get your periods whatever life is unpredictable anything can happen so add some buffer days in between so that you are able to actually manage your time accordingly otherwise if it's a very strict timetable it will it will put a mental pressure on you secondly like i said in my previous video as well you might feel burnout at times it's very advisable to join a gym while you're need pg preparation it will make you strong physically and as well as it will clear your mind of negative energy and negative thoughts simple activities also you can do at your home in the evening you can go walk 30 minutes outside of your room or outside of your hostel talk to your best friends video call your parents or just have a chill out session with your buddies at your hostel or at your home that will keep you mentally sane and use those buffer days in between use your break days in between so that your days are not wasted if i study 14 days with full 100 percent effort then i get burnt out and i don't study the next 14 days that's game over right there so we don't have to do that instead we'll be studying five days taking one day break five days one day break in that way you can keep your motivation up plus your momentum up next point with respect to building a timetable for yourself is give equal time to mcqs as you're giving to your theory reading so you should be ideally doing is that let's say that i want to study anatomy today in the morning let's say i've sat down and studied upper limb thorax as well as lower limb for anatomy in the evening i'll be starting to do the mcq for the same first i'll do the pyqs if those are left second i'll do the custom modules in custom modules i'll go ahead and i'll only select the tags of anatomy in that anatomy first i'll make a custom module of upper limb then i'll select only the pyqs and then finally i'll create a custom module of let's say 50 or 100 questions in that way from each sub topic of your particular subject let's say from anatomy only upper limb you have covering all the importance as well as all the important pyqs and you will be solving this custom module for each and every single topic of that subject Subject. any subject has maybe max to max 12 to 13 different topics and each topic has max to max 50 to 60 questions sometimes more sometimes less that is the average so by doing this custom module in this way where you are specifically making a custom module for each individual unit you will be making sure that you are not missing a single question a single pyq which is important for you so after studying in the morning i'll be in the evening solving the custom module solving the question bank and trying to apply the things which i've learned in the morning you don't have to be the person who has knowledge of everything but does not know how to apply it you might know everything about cranial nerves but when it comes to actually answering the questions you might you might fail at it so that's the thing that practical aspect is more important than the theory aspect if a person is solving 
only questions only questions he will perform much better than a person who is doing only theory only theory in the main exam because in the end you are going to be solving the questions tumhe wahan pe why why leke theory nahi likhni hai exam mein you have to click and you have to solve the questions and always develop this mentality that whenever you are solving questions sit with a register and write down your mistakes because it is bound that you are going to repeat the mistakes if i ask you one question today you get it wrong 6 months later you'll get the same question wrong again 100% guaranteed because that's how the way our brain works actually make sure that you sit with a register you write down all the difficult questions that you feel and that way you can work on it while you're solving custom modules make sure that you are at least targeting a score of 70% initially it might be less like 40% 50% also but if you're solving only pyq ones your final target before your need pg should be to at least get a score of 80% or 85% more that just means that you are completing most of the pyqs and you know how to approach the questions and trust me they do ask from the pyqs if possible not just the pyqs of need pg but also do the pyqs of aims that is ini ct and also for fmg all of these pyqs are exchanged between these three exams and they just keep on rotating from here and there like we saw on the last neat examination as well a lot of inict topics and questions were directly asked in the neat pg the next point is utilization of your online resources should be done properly that means you should have trust in your resource and you should complete the resource and to its entirety for example i did maro so in the maro you have to try to complete the question bank if possible you can do that otherwise minimum is the pyqs and the custom modules from each of the topics secondly you have to do the revision videos if you are a student of maro thirdly you have to do the mcq discussion videos which are a gold mine for neat pg students. students there were three to four questions that i would not have gotten correct if i had not watched the mcq discussion videos of maro so they are they are a really good resource for you so you can absolutely use that the next point is regarding gts in the first half of your preparation you should be giving a gt at least 15 days in so every 15 days every two weeks may you give a gt you review it completely and thoroughly and in the later half of your preparation you have to give gt at least one or twice a week if possible that would be great so every like fifth or sixth day you are sitting down and giving a gt and keeping up with the timetable if you are exhausting all the maro gts you can give the previous years maro gt as well that is that is working fine as well but please my friends the first point which i have told you never shy away from giving a gt it's okay that if you get some wrong if you get a wrong percentile the more important point is that you've got a practice done which will help you in the main exam only and only in the last one month of your preparation stop giving gts so that for example the exam is next month this month i will stop giving all the gts because i don't want anything to affect my mental health badly maybe this time if i get a bad score i will feel bad ki what have i done am i not able to give the exam well so avoid giving gts one month before the exam it can play with your mental health quite a lot but before that keep giving gts keep giving as many gts as possible it's never going to harm you do you give gt from one source or many sources so the answer honestly is that you can give from multiple sources so i did that i tried that so i gave maro gts primarily otherwise i also gave the damn cbt i also recorded the vlog of it um and i also gave a prep ladder and a cerebellum gt so to be very honest dams gt to me felt like it was heavily relied on their own notes whereas maro gts are never i don't know where they get the questions from sometimes in notes also you cannot find the answers nextly prep ladder and cerebellum gts i found out to be very very easy so at that point in maro i was scoring like 130 questions correct both of those i scored 150 plus correct those were very easy and they were absolutely not of the level of the neat pg examination so if possible go with the maro gts they are of high quality they are a bit difficult but you have to read the difficult stuff you are going to give an examination of neat pg tum koi faltu se 10th standard ki exam nahi de rahe ho tum neat pg de rahe ho you have to prepare yourself with a difficult platform that's one way you are ensuring that your quality of your questions is good and you are able to do well lastly whatever study plan that you are making make sure that is adjustable let's say that you today found out that i am able to do surgery in 3 days don't give 5 days to it make it flexible make it adjustable and keep your mind also flexible you don't have to give set amount of uh, days to one subject it's all on you if you like one subject if you are good at it don't give that many days to it if you are able to revise it using just your notes and pyqs then that's okay that that subject is considered as done don't fall into the fomo that if somebody is doing medicine for 7 days i'll also do it for 7 days it's nothing like that you can just read the btr for medicine for the integrated systems it will be done that way be adjustable be flexible and you'll see that you'll rock the examination that was all i really wanted to say with respect to how do you make a timetable with respect to neat pg i really hope that you enjoyed this video if you did give me one minute i'll tell you about my neat pg blueprint if you did i'm pretty sure my neat pg success blueprint you will absolutely love this is just one video and you can already see that i've told you so many new things which you did not know about but in my neat pg success blueprint there are 25 of this and in each of these videos i've described into detail about how do you prepare for the neat pg examination right from the motivational aspect of it to the 
subject wise guide where i've given you the hot spots of each different subjects for all the 19 subjects what are the important points that you have to absolutely read what are the important key factors which they are going to ask the questions from how do you balance your studies with your internship how do you not feel burn out what is the best way to utilize maro how do you do the custom modules i've got like five videos dedicated to how to use any coaching platform app because everybody is using maro and prepladder dams btr whatever how do you actually go ahead of the competition while avoiding fomo at one piece you can get my neat page blueprint at 15% off using the code pluripotent this code is valid only for 2 weeks and i'm 100% sure that if you're a student who's starting out then neat page preparation blueprint will change your change your entire game we've got a community of 2500 plus students who've already enrolled in it and here are some of the things which they have to say Use the code to report in for 15% off and I'll see you in the blueprint. And also thank you so much for watching this video. Do make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Goodbye, it's Avanaj and I'll see you in the next one.